Okay, in this video, we're going to be pulling a vacuum on this mini split heat pump. Now, let me go over the setup a little bit. If you look right in, down in here, you can see I got a vacuum pump. This is a two stage vacuum pump, 5 CFM, one third horsepower. Uh, we're using a, the blue line is a 3 8 inch fittings on, on this side. There's a quarter inch fitting on that side. This is a vacuum rated line which is good down to 20 microns. Now, over here, let's go over here, we'll get a little bit closer look what's going on over here. That looks like a, probably a little spaghetti going on there. Now, if you remember, if you watched the previous video, I was using a valve core removal tool, which is still in place. Now, all the Schrader valves that's inside, there will be a Schrader valve. I've removed all the Schrader valves out of the, all of these here valve core removal tools. This one and this one. I want to have the most amount of flow that I can so there will be minimum amount of restriction so we can pull a vacuum as quickly as we can on this unit. All right. If you remember, this side here is 5 sixteenths. This side down here is quarter inch. Now, Connected to this top side of this here valve core removal tool is another valve core removal tool and this has quarter inch ports on each side. Okay, now up here connected to that valve core removal tool we have a micron gauge. And right now it's saying HP because we're measuring at atmospheric pressure. So what we're going to do, and by the way I also I did put a little bit of nylog over each one of the fittings because I want to try to ensure that I got the best seal possible. So let's go ahead and we'll start up the vacuum pump. Now since this is a two-stage vacuum pump, it has a gas ballast valve. Let it run a few seconds. Then I'm going to close off this valve with some brass plug. So if you look up there, now I'm going to just pull you in there, you can watch the micron gauge. Now what we want to do is we want to try to get as low as we can, say around, you know, about 200 microns. And then we're going to say whatever we can get it to. Then we're going to shut off the valve here on the core removal tool. And then we'll shut the pump off. And then we'll watch the pressure and then we don't want it to go above 500 microns. If we keep seeing it rise, the numbers start to keep going up and up. And that's another test here where you can do for, you know, that you got a leak. So I'm gonna let this run for a little bit. And then uh, a little bit later, we'll get back with you. Just wanna show you where our progress is at. It's only been about five minutes and we're already down to you know, 422 microns. So we're gonna see how low it'll go. Now one thing uh, I had to do is that I, I had this blue vacuum hose on here, as you remember. And I could only get it to go down to 1600, so what I did is I went and got my service hose off of my manifold gauge set, so that's what I'm actually using. So evidently, that blue vacuum rated hose there had an issue in trying to seal on the, on the ports. So we're just going to let it go down and just see how low it'll go. Once we get it down as low as it'll go, then I'll get you guys back in the next shot. Okay, it's been about, oh, I guess about 40 minutes now that we've been uh, pulling the vacuum here. And we're down to 137.4. And you probably, you know, you want to get down to at least about, say, 200 microns. And I just let it run a little bit. I just want to see how low it will go. So we're looking pretty good on that. Now, if I hadn't mentioned it earlier, and I don't think I did, if you want to pull a deep vacuum, you want to make sure that you change your vacuum pump oil. If it's been sitting around for a few weeks, a few months, then you, you want to go ahead and change it. In fact, I've changed the oil right before we did this job here. And that way I want to make sure that I can pull a, a good vacuum on this system, okay? So it looks like it's kind of holding right there. So what we're gonna do now, is we, let me back you out and then we're gonna go and I'll show you the next step here. Okay, so what we wanna do, the first thing we wanna do is close off this valve here. 
to oscillate the vacuum pump. And now we're going to turn off the vacuum pump. Now, what we want to do for about 10 minutes or so, we want to be monitoring this here pressure. Okay? Now it may go up slightly, but we don't want this here numbers to be climbing up. If you do see it climbing up, you know, pretty rapidly, then you know you've got a leak here. So I'm going to monitor this for about 10 minutes, make sure that it'll hold a vacuum, and then we'll proceed to the next step. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes now. Now what you'll find normal is that when you turn the vacuum pump off and you isolate the system here, the vacuum, the micron gauge here, it will go up slightly. What you don't want to see is for those numbers to just keep going up, 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 up. And, uh, and you want to be under 500 microns before you start letting the refrigerant into the line set. Now the refrigerant is stored inside the condenser. So we're going to get ready now to start letting the refrigerant into the line set. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to isolate this here micron gauge from the refrigerant pressure because we don't want all that pressure be coming up here to this gauge which is really you know for vacuum. So we're going to isolate it. We're going to shut this valve off. So after we have this here valve closed, then we're going to open up the service ports here, the valves. This five millimeter inch. I'll come back to that one a little bit later. Open it fully open. And now let me get this one. All right, so what we need to do now is we're going to be taking off this here service line. And now, let me get the valve core and let's put that valve core back inside. So here's the valve core. It's on the tool. Pull it all the way back. Screw this down. Now open up the valve. And now, so now we have refrigerant pressure pressing on this stem. So now we have to push in. That's quite a bit of pressure. And then while you're holding it in, we want to try to get this thing screwed back up in there. Okay, so we're good. And so you can see that the valve core is back up inside, screwed into the unit. Okay. So that took care of that. Now as a final check, we need to make sure that the valve core is not leaking. So we're going to put a little bit of bubbles here, cover the end, 
There we go. That's covered pretty good. And we're going to kind of give it about a minute. And we'll watch to see if we see any bubbles form. Okay, it's been about a whole couple of minutes. Everything looks fine. I don't see any bubbles. So now we're going to just go ahead and remove the valve core tools. There's one. And there's two. Now there's one last little thing here. I'm going to be putting a little bit of nylog on the threads around the flare. Make sure we keep this thing sealed. Helps ensure a good seal. And then we'll screw our caps back on. Give it a little snug. And that completes it. Okay, one final look at the insulation. Covers are all on now. Just coming down the wall. Let's take a look at our condensate. Oh yeah. Yes, you're doing good. Come on, baby. Yep, so it's really coming out of there now. I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera, but that is looking good. Okay, continuing all down. We'll get a front view. Now we'll come around on the side. Oh yeah, there's a dis disconnect. I pointed that out earlier in video. And of course, we have our line set cover on now. Okay, from that uh, last clip that you just saw where we were outside with the condenser, well over a week has passed now. So now we're going to do the follow-up and we're inside enjoying the comfort of AC and the temperature outside right now is about 89 degrees. Well, as you can see, there's the indoor unit, and you can see the display with the number there. That's the set point that I have it set to. That's 75 degrees, and it's blowing pretty, pretty good air out. Uh, I checked it a little while ago. The air right now is blowing out is 53 degrees. Of course, that's going to be based on your temperature of the outside, the humidity, your inside temperature, and also the humidity that's on the inside. And over here way over there I still got a lot of organizing to do I got everything back in place but I just got to get it organized so right over here this is where the uh, remote control is at for the unit I have it set so it'll follow me so wherever I have this here remote control the sensor is actually mounted inside here so wherever it's at that's going to be the temperature that it's measuring Right now it's uh, 76 degrees in here. Uh, so this is uh, doing pretty good. Oh, and one last final thing here. My garage door is mounted on the west wall. So what I'm going to be doing, so we can get the glare out, I'm going to be putting this product here. It's by Hela. It is a heat control window film. And it is... You can see right there, it's going to reject heat. It's going to be blocking the heat here, 72% of it. And also for the UV rays, it's going to be blocking 99%.
Okay, one other thing I want to say about this uh, unit is that it's very quiet. The outside for the condenser fan is very quiet. The indoor unit is very quiet also. And if you didn't see the other two videos that I did on this here mini split heat pump, you can watch them. We'll put one there and we'll put one down here. And also, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. You're quite welcome. And also, click on the notification bell so this way you'll be notified of new video uploads. And you guys take care and we'll see you in the next one.